There is a crucial master key of creation which unlocks all the other universal principles, but it is too rarely spoken about. Today, we uncover the secret behind this perhaps intentionally occulted principle, the Eighth Hermetic Law. By consciously applying the universal principles into our everyday lives we gradually develop a deeper understanding of the ultimate truths behind the veil of the holographic reality we live in, but we need to realize that the mind lives in duality. Because of this dual nature both of ego and of mind, anything we manifest through them will inevitably also bring about its opposite, anything created in duality will manifest as duality. With the words of Drunvalo Melchizedek, we need to begin to live and create within our hearts rather than live and create from our minds. As long as the mind and ego control the direction of creating, there will always be problems in the outer world, for the ego thinks only of itself and lives in duality. But when the heart is in control, everything comes back to balance, for the heart feels and knows only the oneness of life. According to Mark Paschio, the eighth principle of natural law, also known as the lost principle, is the one law that binds all the other seven principles together and protects their creative capacity. This encapsulating principle is the container inside which all the other principles lie. The seven principles can be represented through sacred geometry, with the seven overlapping circles, encapsulated by the eighth circle, the eighth principle, all together forming the seed of life. The eighth principle is like a shell of this seed, if the shell is removed or broken, the seed loses its vital generative energy. Once we think about the eighth principle in this way, we will understand why it is of such vital importance and why it is called the generative principle of creation. This generative principle is strongly connected with care and appreciation. Its seat and driving force is not our mind but our heart. Becoming aware of this principle encapsulating all other hermetic principles, we are invited to be both discerning and intentional about the focus of our attention. Through focused, appreciated attention, we allow ourselves to reap the benefits from those aspects of life that we value the most. Whatever we give our attention to, will grow. The lost principle is governed by the dynamic of heartfelt care, what we care enough about to pay attention to, to spend our time on, to manifest into our reality. What we care about on a day-to-day -day basis, acts as the underlying driving force of our thoughts and actions, what we care about becomes what we think about, and how we behave. With that in mind, it is important to note that what we truly care about is not generated in our mind, but in our heart. Our heart is the one center that is ultimately generating our soul's physical experience. Understanding that what we care about is ultimately what manifests in our physical world can help us shift from passively to actively engaging with life. We have a choice when it comes to focusing our attention and this awareness enables us to become the ones shaping our experiences. When we actively tend to anything, it could be a plant, a pet, a room, or a core value that is most important to us, it is likely to flourish. The Eighth Principle invites us to consciously decide on aspects of our life we wish to bloom, to actively engage and focus our attention on what we wish to grow, while at the same time releasing our expectations and possible subconscious resistance by cultivating appreciation for all the blessings we already have in our life. As Abraham Hicks would say, once we send a strong signal to the universe, a clear vibrational frequency matching the frequency we wish to manifest, the next step is to step aside and let the miracle unfold. So, tend to it, care for it, spend your time and focus on it, but don't hold on to it, don't try to grasp it. The latter is most easily done by cultivating a deep sense of gratitude for everything that is already unfolding in the here and now. Last but not least, we should make sure that what we say we care about is genuinely reflected in our actions. The heart or care should come first. The mind or knowledge should follow the heart and come second. Both should be then supported by our guts, which is action. Our thoughts, words and deeds should be in unity. That is what unity consciousness is, its thoughts, emotions and actions unified. When we are invested in what matters to us most, any onlooker will be able to see that we are walking the walk and talking the talk. In the words I received in one of my meditations, don't preach, practice. 